This is Joey Bird interviewing Shirin Naveed on the 19th of February 2018 at her home in Hall Green. Shirin was born in Cologne, Germany in 1999. She migrated to the UK in 2004 and to Birmingham in 2005. Um, so tell me about the place where you were born. Um, so yeah, like you said, I was born in Cologne in Germany. Um, it's a very, yeah, it's, it's a fairly big city. Um, and at the time of when it was kind of first established, was probably one of the largest cities in Europe, um, part of the Roman Empire, um, and and so it's actually really historical. So it's got um, this massive cathedral, Cologne Cathedral, and it's um, I can't I can tell you how tall it is now, but it um, like oh, I can I, I actually could. It literally got, I'm doing a painting on it at the moment. <laughs> it's 1,000, 15,731 metres tall, no, 150, oh, I'm messing it up. <laughs> uh, it's a really, really tall, um, gothic, old cathedral, and I think that it just kind of dominates Cologne skyline. It's it's beautiful. It's like, yeah, it, <laughs> it just played a, it's played a massive role in my life, I feel personally, anyway. Um, cause I want to go, to go on to study architecture, and I think it's probably, like, the first building that influenced me. Um, like, well, like, yeah, profoundly. And then Cologne in general as a city is just, yeah, very multicultural, very open. It's by a river. Um, and I could very much compare it to London in a way because of that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, um, tell me about your family history. Um, so, yeah, my mum's was, was born, well, just outside of Cologne. And she... Uh, yeah, I spent most of my spent all of her life in Germany until she met my dad, um, who kind of came all the way from Pakistan, and I I couldn't even tell you like it, like the entirety of his journey. I think he he migrated at yeah he migrated at quite a young age, just generally to Europe, wanted to get out of um, the slums where he lived, um, which I like recently went to visit as well, and most of his family still live there. Um, he's kind of the one that made it out in ways he's, he's got a sister as well that moved to germany but he obviously um yeah i think yeah he, he went to study in cyprus um and he did i'm not i'm not quite sure how he ended up in germany but he did and that's where my parents met each other and um for a multitude of reasons decided to move to england can you tell me about your earliest childhood memories in germany um, so obviously I was quite young uh, when I moved, but I do remember quite a bit, like, I think probably like some of my fondest memories are, um, like kindergarten. <laughs> so I, um, it was like a Montessori kindergarten, which meant that you could pretty much decide to do whatever you wanted. There was no kind of curriculum. And like in Germany, you don't go to school till you're six or seven years old. Um, anyway, but they like, they just pretty much put activities in front of you. So like one week you might, um, be allowed to do arts and crafts or you have these materials at your disposal and the next week's next week you'll have another set um or you get to play uh, with like the water um like fountain things i don't know but it was, it was just a really nice like little kindergarten and i just i just remember having like I think, yeah was very much introduced to arts and crafts and learning lots of different skills but it was very nice because you like you were able to explore these things because you wanted to like another another thing that I really loved was like this mandala room that we had. It was like a like a little re- little relaxing room, and you, like it was like mood like mood lit, and you just sat in this room and drew mandalas. <laughs> Hence, um, why I've got one literally hanging in my room. Um, what was it like growing up in Germany at that time? So yeah, um, it's just really quite simple. I think as anything is at that age because I moved when I was, like, five years old. Um, I don't necessarily... I mean, I couldn't tell you a lot about politics or, what you know, what, what the state of affairs were at the time, but I just remember it all being quite simple. We lived in a nice flat um, or like on, like, a fairly busy road. But and I think in a couple, we moved um, flats, actually, within that building um, once or twice. And I just remember, I, I think... I remember like my parents complaining quite a bit about like the neighbours or like because we're obviously you have kids in a flat building and like you can hear um 
each other on different levels and like we had, a, we had my parents constantly got complaints because like me and my brother were being too loud or something but I think generally um, people in Germany like take less or like they're not as polite <laughs> as British people in a way so um, they'll say something if they, if they don't like it and they yeah I don't know I think people that was like a general thing that my mum even like comments on today she's like people in England are generally nicer <laughs> um, but I guess it depends where you go as well what else do I remember in Germany just like childhood memories and playing as, as any other kid I think at that age what was family life like in Germany at the time um so yeah it was really pretty simple um my mom kind of stayed stayed at home for um the most part obviously on like maternity leave um she was a dental nurse before that before she's like started having kids um and my dad um was often out so he um had yeah he was working quite a lot or tried to um make himself you know be be financially stable um of some sorts he worked in the markets um and so it was all like out early mornings um and then yeah, pretty much worked, and then yeah, and he worked as a taxi driver as well. So he was pretty much doubling up, doing doing a lot. He was a taxi driver for quite some years um, in Germany, and I think definitely, um, and from speaking to my dad about it since, occupation's been like a massive, um, massive reason for moving to England. Um, well, not not just that, but. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a multitude of things at the end of the day. Like, he had some friends in England and um, and he just went to visit, really, but he, I think he felt a lot more accepted here or he could envision himself. Like, he's always wanted to do something and he's he's very much like a... Well, yeah, he was, he was, that, he was that one kid of the family of, like, so, so like, Pakistani families are huge. Um, you know, he's got, like, what, th- three brothers, four sisters... Um, and he's that one that like kind of flew the nest and he always wanted like for him to like make it to Europe and um, like meeting my mum he really did want to establish something like also for like I guess us as children but he always wanted to be like it was his dream to kind of own a business um, and he kind of yeah he was always in like involved or interested in business from like a young age um, that he thought it'd be easier or like very much found it to be easier to kind of start up um somewhere else so like in in England for example um I think like Germany's regulations have always been a lot tighter in that respect and haven't been as friendly to um yeah people of color or like Pakistanis in general so you like in Germany you've got quite a large um Turkish Muslim population um it's like in the same way that in England you've got a lot of like South Asians you've got a lot of um yeah lots and lots of Turkish Turkish people in Germany that yeah, I would I would definitely say they're like equivalent, um, and so I don't think he necessarily felt that accepted by them either. Um, that South Asians are a minority in Germany, and um, kind of coming here felt a lot more community, but also like a sense of hope and like wanting to just start like afresh, um, in ways that he came. Yeah, so he came to actually we first moved to Derby, when we first moved. Um, and he was like he's he's just done loads of things like business wise. So we came, went from markets to car dealership. Um, so he was like importing cars from Japan and selling them um, here. But obviously, I think for him, or well, the reason why it, it came to be Birmingham in the end was um, this attraction. As as like any other person living like even living in England would be like you'd be a, you're attracted to a city for <laughs> for like business and commercial reasons. I guess like the the lifestyle. Um, as well as this, yeah, you can you can just fare off better, almost. So I think he thought it would go a lot better here, and I guess, yeah, that's 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 how it ended up in Birmingham, briefly. So what were you feeling at that time? At the time, I didn't think I like necessarily registered what was going on. I think for like a, for like a four year old's little mind to tell them that you're like moving country like I don't I'm not sure I probably knew what like England was as a concept <laughs> or like what, what what is this place like I knew of it because my parents had told me about it but I'm not sure to what length I'd like encountered it before that 
um, well, like that I can remember of. I was just told, yeah, we're moving to, yeah, a place that speaks English and art. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I, that was my first encounter with England, really. Um, it's my parents telling me that. And I, I just remember my mom like, just trying to teach me little like phrases of English like beforehand. Like I just remember at one point we sat down like in my room and she like, she was trying to teach the word the to me because <laughs> like the the th sound isn't a sound that like really exists in the German language, um like that. And like compa- she was trying to compare it to the German language um to me like this is this is how you would say that in German, but you know this this is the English version of it or like instead of saying die der das which is like yeah the german like there's multiple german and gendered versions for saying the she's like it's just the one word it's the and i just remember being like really small going the <laughs> like not really quite getting it but like i just think i just really ex- i just accepted it really i didn't really know like i think i was a bit like upset to like leave my friends or like knowing knowing i was going to have to say bye to them when it came to it, I had this one friend, and well, I think we were like friends, but we weren't that good friends at the same time. I feel like, like I don't know, I've always felt like <laughs> this is like a young me, but I always thought she was a little bit controlling. So I was a bit like, <laughs> like she was, she always decided like what, she, what what we got to play. And I told her like I was moving, and she didn't believe me. She was like, "No, you're not." no you're not <laughs> that was probably like the last conversation that I had with her I was like no I'm moving to England I wanted to say bye like I just wanted to like give her a hug and like like kind of wanted to see her upset about that if they, in a way but she just like she just didn't believe me and after that I never saw her again <laughs> so yeah that's and then that, that was it really I've not, not really kept in, in contact with those kids up from my kindergarten because at the same time I don't really necessarily remember a lot about them or like their names I remember first names anyway yeah so um what do you remember about England when you first arrived there like, what was that like and the moving I don't remember much about the like moving process but I, I, like, I definitely have quite a few first impressions of when I first got here of generally me being very confused. <laughs> so I think the language um, of not knowing a single word of English before coming here definitely made it difficult. Well, it was difficult for me at the time, but at the same time, my parents, um, one of the reasons they decided to move at that point uh, when I was still quite young was for me to be able to get to grips and integrate a lot more a lot quickly they knew that you know they might not necessarily be able to to the same extent but if they um brought me over here young enough and my brother who's like four years younger than me that would be able to like adapt and kind of obviously knew how easy it is for children to learn languages that obviously when I got here I was really confused but it, it's resulted in me like yeah I'm speaking fluent English it's it's, it's not really you know, I've, I've integrated, um, definitely, I think. But at the time, I was, I felt quite different, I think. I wasn't really sure of what was going on a lot of the time. Um, and, like, I definitely, and to this day, like, hold that, like, the speaking or knowing a language um, is, like, an entrance into a culture. That might not be your own. And so, like, do you know, I, I remember being, because I, I got put back a year even because I was yeah because I couldn't speak English so I was put into reception which even if I'd stayed in Germany at that time I still wouldn't have gone to school I wouldn't have gone to school till I was six or seven my mum was a little bit against that as well like having yeah come from Germany she was like I don't understand why they have to be in education from such a young age and have a curriculum like it didn't make any sense to her um but I was yeah I was thrown into um, reception even though I think I should have technically been in year one at that stage um and I had a personal like well not personal tutor but it was like a teacher that gave me vocab um and we helped to go through things but one of the first things that I remember is like being really confused at what a register was <laughs> like they were calling out names and the, this person this teacher obviously called out my name but and she she seemed to like want some kind of response from me but I don't, don't really didn't really get what that like what I was meant to say and I had, I had it had to be explained to me that I had to say yes miss <laughs> but I didn't quite get I had had no idea what that meant I was just repeating these words like mindlessly like yes miss 
like okay okay um and I guess you just learn you learn through that I guess it was I think it was difficult definitely um at first adapting to to the language in terms of culture I don't think it made too much difference for me um because we moved into a house as well a lot of a lot more English people are house owners in Germany um yeah a lot of people it's, it's really normal for people to live in flats and I think that plays out in like a collective and like cultural mindset that people spend a lot more time outside of their houses um outside of their residencies because of that but I guess yeah it was nice I think um to be home owning and to be as loud as possible um I mean, my brother would like jump from the beds and we didn't have to worry about what the neighbors would think. So we weren't, we weren't being told to be quiet anymore. But um, yeah, that, 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 in terms of culture, I don't think I had any trouble adapting. It was, it was definitely, it was just the language. So yeah, we moved and lived in Derby first and um, we had these family friends there that kind of helped us adjust a little bit to like British lifestyle. Um, and actually my dad and his friends started a business together um, in Derby and that was the kind of car dealership that I like mentioned um, and yeah I think that I, I'm not can't remember how that that went really I just remember visiting that workplace a couple of times um, but they did actually have a falling out and they um, split partnership I, again I, I wouldn't know what it was about I think my parents very much tried to protect me from that at that age but um yeah, because we like they had kids as well, and so we like we, we made good friends with um, this other family's children. Um, I just remember like not seeing them very much again after that. <laughs> um, but and that I think that's kind of where that hope um, and looking into other options in England in England came from. So when we first land, I think what what my dad was telling me is that they first did obviously land in London, um, but couldn't really see a future there um, in terms of yeah congestion and it wasn't really a place that they feel that they could really um, easily or in peace bring up their children. So they like moved outside of that and Derby was really nice for a while, I think. Um, but in terms of yeah, business and what my dad wanted to establish, he f thought yeah, he thought he'd really give Birmingham a go. Um, and so he came to Birmingham we came to Birmingham, yeah, in like 2005. And by that time, I'd like um, integrated fairly well into school, I think, or I, I had a couple of friends. Um, but at the same time, like I was kind of used to moving about at that point. I was like, sure, uh, whatever. Not, not that I would have really had a choice, but I think it didn't really affect me too much. Um, I've always been quite like a that person. I just don't mind, just keep moving, really. Um, but yeah, so we moved to Birmingham and I went to the primary school that is on the same road as my road um, that I still live on now. So it's actually, um, I'd say Birmingham's the first place that we've really like settled um, in that respect. And yeah, I have some of like, my fondest memories in primary school there and like moving on to the secondary school and um, actually still being friends with people that I went to primary school with there. So that's really nice. And business, like, for my dad, I think, yeah, so he's managed to since then. So he went kind of back to working in the markets even. Um, I like the, yeah, Birmingham rag market. Selling clothes, um, uh, underwear, and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> like, he's, it, it's been mostly women's clothing that he's um, sold. But, yeah, he started off at the markets and, like, with a lot of, like, hard work and... Um, determination like, like he's all, yeah he's a very like really dri driven person but he um he then went on to wholesale and um and it's kind of what he does now so he's actually yeah built himself up a business in which he's now supplying other people not just yeah the markets as well um but like online um and supplying other people with those clothes so he actually is like manufacturing um he's kind of gone back to and made links in in Pakistan um in in regards to like design and manufacturing and he's yeah I don't, I don't really know what he's what he's planning at the moment he's always he's always planning something but he's definitely like a, a workaholic um that he's he's managed to, I think he's I think he feels quite accomplished in that sense or like he's very grateful for what Birmingham has allowed him 
to be able to achieve like like a lot of his personal goals and um yeah like he's he's employing quite a lot of people um and he has really good relationships with them i think i worked for them for a while um as well on, on the sex i've taken a gap yeah and it, it was really nice to see like firsthand um everything that he does in the business and yeah he he does not he's he's up until like ridiculous hours in the morning like working literally like on the computer um admin there's so many things that go into like running a business so i can't i can't imagine but i actually like i don't know made me resent business for so long <laughs> but um yeah as like, weird as it is like i don't feel like i could go into that but um it's really amazing to see like how he does it Tell me about your memories of primary school. Um, so yeah, I managed to go back into the year that I was meant to be in um, after getting like my language proficiency up a little bit. I think I picked it up quite quickly actually, um, or from from what I was told. And I managed to like, yeah, make make some good friends. Like my primary, um, my, yeah, my best primary school friend, who I can like really really luckily say like I'm still best friends with so um and it, it's it's interesting because she like her grandma lives on the same road as me she lives just up the road and every like, every like Wednesday we'd uh well one Wednesday she'd come to my house the next Wednesday I'd go to her grandma's house and like she'd yeah we just we had a good time I think you know it's like we're just best pals really and although we saw each other a lot more than just like just that Wednesday um but she actually ended up moving away um in year four and that like massively affected me I think I was like so upset for ages like my uncle um my German uncle still brings it up now because I think it's one time I like not like had a breakdown but I was a bit I was very upset by it that like oh my best friend's moving <laughs> um and then she brings it up now so it's like, oh you know how how's Molly doing like is she like are you come to terms with it is it like is, is, is it okay are you okay <laughs> for the fact that she, like she moved away um so yeah, I can just imagine how upset it was at the time. But we've because she's obviously come back to see her family, um, quite quite regularly. Um, that we've managed to like retain our friendship as well, like living on the same road. So every time she came down to see her family, she'd see me, um, and vice versa. And she's actually like, yeah, she's moved back to Birmingham now for uni. So it's it's very it's really nice that I've like, yeah, managed to hold on to those friendships. And, and even then, I've managed to um retain friendships with some of my German friends or like well my one best German friend who's so my mum had this best friend um and they both basically had children at the, like, pretty much the same time and so this um this girl Angelina is like a year older than me and because every no, we, we, we do go back to Germany quite regularly as well like um obviously to visit family we don't have any other direct family in in England um so it, it's just, yeah, my mum, my, my, my dad, me and my brother, and our cat, <laughs> if, that, if, if that counts. But um, so, yeah, a lot of kind of childhood was always going back to Germany as well. Um, and, yeah, connecting with, with, with those that side of me and um, my German family. So I did always, I think, grow up, like growing up as a younger child, retain my German identity. I never saw myself as as anything else, even though I lived in England, and I don't know if that's of how England England was introduced to me. I just I just saw it as like another place of living um, for quite a while until I'd say in more recent years where I've I've been quite you know, retrospective and introspective where I've realised like okay I would not be the same person in in any sense had I not moved to England or like lived in Birmingham in the way that I have and it's it, it's like crazy to think or like think back like if I'd sit in Germany like how different my life would be um yeah like growing up in school was like yeah I've just had some really really good memories um went to uh King Edward's Campbell Girls for secondary school which I like yeah, and I went there for sixth form as well. Um, and I can just say I've just met, like, the best people. And, yeah, I've just... I've, I've been really enjoying Birmingham, to be honest. 
So yeah, I think I carried that like German identity with me throughout all of secondary school as well. Um, I was always kind of known as like that German girl or like not really, not that I didn't understand customs, but I very much encounter, like, encountered Britishness or what it meant to kind of be English, if that's, if you can even define that um, in, in, in secondary school, I think because it's quite, hmm, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go into like a grammar school talk, but you do have a fair amount of like middle class kids in there um, that, you know, I, I went, I made best friends with this one girl and like a seven or year eight and um, going around to her house, I was just amazed at like how, how different it was or like, um, you know, you have this kind of whole sit down family meal time, um, kind of sit down dinner and then all these cakes and <laughs> I don't know, it's just, she's, and even like, she, she's still one of my like really good friends now, um, but I would very much, yeah, like, you know, she really loved that great British Bake Off. It's a very like <laughs> British um, family, I guess. Like it's your average Brit like middle class British family, which I just like. That was the first time I'd encountered that kind of culture, um, and that was through like yeah the friends that I made at Camp Hill. Um, but I think yeah, apart aside from like obviously my German um, side and German national identity, I would I'd be tempted to talk about. Um, my Asian side as well so obviously my dad being Pakistani and obviously I haven't migrated necessarily from Pakistan but um having that culture influence me um yeah it's just like massively shaped my identity like that this kind of constant battle between um well I don't know I wouldn't I don't know if I would put them in in conflict but there's definitely been like internal conflicts um of what kind of what what culture is in a sense so like you do you do have quite opposing not not values but um it's, it's just they're just completely different ways of life at the end of the day and some views on things are um opposite as well so that you know trying my life's been a constant trying to maintain a balance between what um you know traditional muslim or like pakistani views are and uh, aligning those with with german views but at the same time all like uh, I'd say I'd say Western views because at the end of the day, I grew up in a, in in Germany, but then also England, and those values aren't too too far apart. It's just it's just a national identity thing, really. It's I, and I'm still deconstructing it now. To be honest, I'm not sure. Um, like I'm obviously very, very proud of Germany in a lot of ways. Like always support like the German football team, <laughs> um, and I definitely rejected. Britishness for a long time but I think that was more of a a response to feeling generally out of place um in a lot of ways and that that also has to do with um being half Pakistani that a, a general or like I think one conversation that comes up a lot like with me and my friends sometimes is um or I've, I've I kind of noticed is people in, in England often talk about or like that I've you know been brought up to be British often talk about class struggle um because that's the first thing that you know you, you you already all identify as British then that that you don't question that at all um that the next thing that you look to identify yourself is is wealth um or this kind of measure of you know I think middle class being middle class is, is more than just um you know how much money you have it's it's the activities that you undertake and the interests that you that you have that um I've never really worried about those kind of things of my my kind of main like identity crisis was always like where do I f fit in in those ways um or what but I, f I think the way they've taken it was try to like mash it all together basically um and especially upon realizing how much British culture has influenced me is tried to instead of necessarily just like hold on to one um or yeah I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm a very like nationalistic person but I like I would always hold up uphold um like you know, British and German values, Pakistani values, like all the way. Like there's um, different ones, different kind of parts of each culture that are amazing and that I just always want to take those bits from. And yeah, I'm not really sure if like I'd <laughs> gone off on a tangent too, but yeah. Um, so I definitely think I've been through a journey of um, attitudes and emotions. So like 
growing up feeling very connected to my German identity, um, that when I obviously travelled to to Britain, that that strengthened because I knew I like wasn't British. But then I think also, um, and one thing I wanted to mention is like my my, and I think the difference between my primary primary school and secondary school is that my primary school, or like I live in an area that's not I wouldn't say predominantly um, Asian, but um, a fair mix, and it, it's really nice. It's really multicultural, and I think. That's also why my dad feels quite comfortable here as well. Like people are, are like him and and can relate to him, and he wanted me to be around that as well, that I could kind of have an insight into his his culture without um him not not him not being there, but like he wasn't necessarily around a lot while I was little, um to you know for him to not be able to teach me things like like Udu like I. I know bits and pieces but because um yeah there was such a focus on like, learning English and and so on that I didn't really yeah he was he was just always working um really and I can't resent him for that at all because it's gotten us to um, a really comfortable kind of place of like financially um but it just meant that I wasn't he like kind of left that responsibility to to infuse that culture to my mum um but like she, she wasn't really able to <laughs> regarding she didn't grow up in that culture at all so all she could really impart to us was was her german culture and so you know, we speak german at home um and i do feel like growing up i i missed out on yeah like asian asian culture in a way like pakistani culture but i learned more about that or about you know what was supposedly supposedly meant to be my religion um at that point you know through other kids around me um I always had questions like, wait, so you Muslim then? Like, or like, what are you? <laughs> like, who are you? What are you? Um, and I couldn't really answer that myself, to be honest. Um, I, and that's when my, like, German, I think, nationality or identity kind of strengthened. Also, like, as a method of rejecting, um, yeah, I definitely went through a massive phase of rejecting Islam and um, my, like, Asian heritage because it, it was just because of the way that I experienced it, to be honest, and the way that when my dad did kind of enter into my life, I was always all, like as an as an authority figure, um, and you know and to people that don't or haven't grown up in uh, the Muslim household, for example, like those things, or like especially if you like Western, they they can seem to be really conflicting, um, in terms of like certain freedoms and what you can and what you can't do, and so I think I saw him as a bit more yeah like an authoritative figure that would kind of stop me from doing the things that I'd always thought or like were taught to be right by Western culture. Um, but I've I've slowly, like, de- and definitely come full circle. That you know, I I was almost like yeah, living like a double life. I couldn't really decide on what what I, what I did want, and I, and I knew yeah, because yeah, for ages I just rejected that side, like side of my culture. But actually, I rediscovered that through um, a lot of my friends, through the people that was around, and my own research, and actually, um, you know, have found there to be so much wealth and richness in in that that. I feel yeah, it's definitely the way that you encounter it. Like I, I was, I, was, I grew up, um, um, and my dad wanted like one thing that you do like as a Muslim as well is you know, read the Quran, and um, I had cl- I got brought to classes, and I did classes. Um, I, I used to be able to read and write Arabic, um, but one thing that I just really didn't understand about it or like really frustrated me at the time was because I, I was never taught the language. Um, we wouldn't have like being um, Pakistani anyway. They don't speak um, Arabic. Um, but you still there's, still, there's still overlaps. You would at least know what things meant, uh, what their relevance was. But because I didn't speak the language, I didn't know what I was reading and I didn't know what I was like writing, and that really frustrated me um, as a child. And those are things that I still think at some points, or like I have these conversations with like my Asian friends, and it is an issue at times. Um, you know, grow, even growing growing up as a British Muslim, I feel like yeah, I've definitely had this experience of growing up as a British Muslim, as well as being a European British person um yeah there's I don't know I don't know how I'd fuse all of those identities together really I'm just kind of just kind of be like I'm just me <laughs> um but yeah so I went to these like Arabic classes and I actually at one point um literally just the one up the road from me got like mocked or like laughed at because I couldn't speak the language um and I didn't, I didn't like the way that it was like, yeah, I, I literally, I tried, I tried to read something and 
like understand something and they, they thought it was really funny and uh, it was just horrible so that yeah that was another reason why I just like rejected it completely or I felt like I'd not like had to try and fit in into like British cultural values or anything but yeah again and I'm, I feel like I'm repeating myself but yeah, felt very strength, strengthened in my German um like identity but I have since then um, matured in a lot of my views and um I think education has massively, massively contributed to that. I'm really grateful for the education that I have been able to get um, or had access to that. I know people that would have been in a similar position to me but not had that and actually their views can come back quite prejudiced. Um, so, and like had I gone round, had I gone to the school, uh, the school that's around the corner from me, which again is pr pr predominantly Asian, I would have you know, come out with a, a whole other range of views. Um, of things so now I think I'm very much at the point now where I'm and I still, I still am working to like actively challenging like different views that I've had or like grown up with from a western perspe perspective and trying to kind of um merge them with yeah like Islamic Pakistani ones which I don't think are generally too far removed at all um it's just a matter of geography and culture from one place to another um, at the same time, I feel like I found my closest friends um, are people that have had similar experiences to me in that way. So, like, I do um, always connect with with other Asians, um, Asian people, or mixed race people, um, in a way that I don't think. Well, not, not that I couldn't, but it obviously depends on the individual. But then, then I have with like. Um, groups of like I mean I had groups of like uh, just white friends but then I realized that they, they didn't really understand or like I couldn't relate to them in a lot of ways because of other things and I think but British culture is very much like oh we could just go out go out go out um that when you say like oh, I can't or like my parents wouldn't let me um that they don't understand that and that that could then it, like impact a friendship in some way which is ridiculous um so I've like definitely been able to relate to a lot of people. So what is your relationship like with um, Germany and Pakistan now? Um, so yeah, I feel like I've definitely come full circle in a lot of ways. So I've I ma I recently managed to, um, we did a whole family trip to Pakistan. And that was the first time I've been in like 11 or so years so the last time I'd, I'd been was when I was seven and again um I remember a fair bit but not to the extent where I was able to form like massive relationships with I feel like I, I was good like good friends and um and obviously knew who my family were and that 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 doesn't I don't know Family in Pakistan is you know, it's it's such a massive thing. It's the thing that they hold on to the most. Like family is, is is family, and um so. But obviously, moving away from that and not being able to speak the language, I always I wasn't I wasn't sure in a lot of ways. And um, since obviously not having been back for so many years, I've never really felt connected to them um in any way. Um, if anything, <laughs> try to like avoid them on Facebook, and so on because you know if they caught me, if they saw me doing all these like British things or like being so Western um, in so many ways, I don't know, like I'd be, I would have been scared of like what they thought of me. So I very much hid from them and didn't really, yeah, and that was, yeah, again, through that, when I went through that phase of rejecting that culture completely, I didn't, I didn't really think much of it, but actually um, regaining an interest in, um, yeah, like Asia, like South Asia that I've, yeah, going back was such a profound experience, and even though I hadn't seen um, a lot of my family you know, for over so many years, like not even actually because I've got so many cousins, um, not actually knowing all of their names, I was it. It was weird because it felt so familiar. Like everyone was so like open-hearted and warm and just embraces you. That like there was very much a knowledge of like we know we're family, um, and we might not be able to speak. A lot of the same language always. They're very proficient in in English, like in in Pakistan. They do teach you English. No, that was another reason one uh, reasons of why my dad quite liked it here because he got taught English as well. Um, in Pakistan, obviously, like colonies were established. It you're you're, you're taught a lot of things that 
German, I think, was a difficult language for him to hold up, like, yeah, learn. Um, and while he did a very good job, and yeah, man of many languages, um, felt a lot more comfortable actually in England because of because of that, because it was almost familiar um, in ways. And that, yeah, I think that boils down to colonialism. Um, but yeah, no, Pakistan was like, it was, it was gorgeous. And that, that sense of community and family being really strong and something that I've definitely missed growing up um, because in the West it's not really seen as a you know, family isn't really that the most important thing necessarily. Um, or it, there's a lot more of an individualistic mindset and I think there's pros and cons um, of both of both ways of like culture and life at the same time. Um, I'm really grateful for having grown up here as well because of um, and I, I'm always going to be intersectionalist in terms of when, I, when I'm speaking about feminism and I don't think you can compare um, what the needs of a woman are in Pakistan to what the needs of a woman are here um, but at the same time you know, Pakistan is a very patriarchal society and I don't think um, well, it was quite profound I think going back and you know, having to like yeah again challenge a lot of views of my own and um, like, realise a lot of things that actually yeah, I think if I yeah if I grew up in Pakistan, I, I would have grown up as those things kind of being the norm, and you know that it is it is a woman's job to kind of you know take care of the household, um, and I would have been completely happy doing that there. Not that not that that would have happened, but at the same time, I'm very much appreciate my role as a woman here and the things that I'm like like able to achieve, and I feel like I have a lot of like yeah control over my own life um, in a lot of ways that yeah. Um, and Germany, I think, is something that I'm, I'm ready to explore again. I feel like, yeah, grow, like I came, definitely came to the realization, um, like one or two years back, that, well, the, yeah, England has affected me very much. <laughs> like having, yeah, the strong German identity, and then realizing like I wouldn't be the same person had I not grown up here. Um, was was quite a lot to take in, I think, or like, it just made me miss some of my German roots. Because although we'd go back like every other holiday, um, like the one, the only thing that I really loved about Birmingham at the time was just like the people that I had in my life. Whereas I like always kind of preferred, I think, Cologne um, as a city, and there was just a bit more going on. Um, but throughout, kind of growing, like, um, yeah, especially in like even like even like now um having a lot of connections in Birmingham has helped me to establish a lot of things and in terms of like yeah creative practice as well so I can only like thank Birmingham for that and I feel like the more the more people you know but also the longer you spend a place you can kind of exercise a measure of control over your surroundings like I do feel very much involved in like the art scene here which I think like it's just really important to me um and I don't think I'm not sure if I would have found that anywhere else or I don't know so I realized that it's those things that I have here that like I'm like holding on to or really enjoy but then I don't know if I'd hmm I don't know I'm still I'm still kind of in conversation with myself about this but um I've actually applied to German uni um uh, to uni in Berlin because it's a place that I want to rediscover or because of like recent years I've not spent as much time growing up there that um it's just kind of like an yeah another like an undiscovered possibility but also because of Brexit and so on <laughs> it's um just a neck like yeah this free tuition she well, yeah, free tuition fees um there's just so many like yeah there's a lot of positive positive like upsides in like studying in Germany or like in terms of Germany as a as a country as a whole, but also like this kind of personal exploration of I want to discover my German side a little bit more because while I've always identified as German, even growing up here, I feel like it might not be the same as if I would have a German identity living in Germany. If that makes sense. I'm gonna swear. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Brex shit <laughs> and uh, I, it's really frustrating um, it's a decision that was kind of made without 
I feel any cons- consultation of the Europeans living in, in England. I feel like they're a lost voice um, as none of my family were able to vote because we're all, we've all got German passports and, you know, we've, we've lived here for oh, like 13, 14 years now, um, massively contribute, you know, I've gone gone to school here, you know, like I said, my dad's an employer, pay tax like anybody else and we can vote in local elections but we can't vote in, um, yeah, we weren't allowed to vote in the Brexit vote and it, if you count up the amount of like, you know, German nationals, not even just German nationals, like European nationals living in the UK, um, they by far and like I can I can guarantee that they all would have voted to stay in the EU. That um, you know, had they been allowed to vote, I don't really think Brexit would have happened. <laughs> um, and it's made things really difficult. So I, like, there is a, there is actually yeah a constant worry at the moment. Like we're having to um, apply. For for British British nationality, uh, British passports, which we hadn't necessarily considered before that, because I don't know, yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't like a nationality, and I, I, as much as it was like a part of like my life, you don't really think or we wouldn't feel like it would affect your immediate surroundings. It's still like a bit of an abstraction, um, and it, yeah, it's ridiculous to think that you know this a, a passport could like change your life or influence how much you could do in a lifetime but like definitely for me because I'm like looking to go and study in Germany again even though we've got like permanent residency here if I were to leave uh, for more than two years I'd have to I'd, I'd lose that and so if I wanted to do a bachelor's um, in Germany and maybe come back for a master's that I'd actually have if I were to come back even though I've like grown up here I'd have to pay like international fees um, which are <laughs> ridiculous and I'd like I know I would more more than likely want to go to London and it's just yeah it's it's just a bit of a pain really I don't there's just kind of too much too much to say on it um so yeah on on the matter of Brexit and like even though yeah we've lived here for so many so many years um and us not being able to vote so literally having the you know, decision that's going to affect our lives the most being um, made for us, uh, being yeah quite unfair, and you know the fact that British uh, well, like British nationals living outside of the UK can vote in general elections, um, so that they could literally be living anywhere. Even you know my uh, a work friend at my dad's workplace um, was really 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 baffled by it because he's got. Um, a Pakistani passport, and that 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 comes into the Commonwealth, so that means they're allowed to vote. Um, but it, it, and it so they were allowed to um, vote. Even, yeah, if you had a Pakistani passport or like you know Australian, you were allowed to vote in in matters of Brexit. Which, like to him, he was really like, well, how come? Why am I allowed to vote and not you? And it just kind of seems a bit twisted because like Brexit, this kind of, yeah the the EU referendum wasn't really. Or the way that it was posed to the public, it wasn't really about like the EU, um, people and you know marginalised people that felt felt that they had been let down um, by the British government. Um, obviously, let their frustrations out as you know, xenophobia at the end of the day. Um, and so he was really baffled because he was like, "Well, they're they're against us brown people, aren't they? <laughs> like, how come how come you European, you're you're white, you should be able to vote. Why am I allowed to vote? Because he clear like it was it was clear to him like it wasn't that wasn't what Brexit was about. But it's actually I don't yeah I don't know if people how aware a lot of the general public were what they were actually voting for, um, and what that meant about immigration and realizing that immigration isn't just um a majority like voting out a majority of South Asian people um, it's it's obviously such a complex issue and I'm not um, I don't want to comment on something that I don't well I've researched a lot into it and then but at the same time uh, I, don't know, I don't know it's just it's just it's gonna be an issue that's all well, it's played on my mind ever since and it's only until like recently that I've actually started to feel like the effects of it, like an actual anxiety of like what is going to happen. Like for one, it's like laughable because uh, nothing's really come to any <laughs> conclusion yet. And I would I wouldn't um, obviously be prejudiced against anyone that did vote to leave the the EU um, because the EU as a as a whole, when it was first created, you know, a lot of people didn't agree with that either. And I think. Um, 
one thing that my mum did say actually was or what one of the reasons that they kind of left or my mum was happy to not necessarily happy to I think she would like she went along with it she was she wanted to obviously stay with my dad and they were going to make that move together but this kind of when the European Union first it came into existence this um because obviously you had the German mark which is the, 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 the currency at the time that was obviously being changed to euros and that you know, that caused that caused a crisis at the time and um so I think my mum was like better now than than not than like too late um because financially Britain was a bit better off but it's interesting how that's kind of like turned around now um and like obviously the pounds falling um and so on and at the, yeah at the time you can understand why people thought it was like a, a negative thing for the European Union to exist but for that to kind of be everything that I've ever grown up with and was the reason why you know this kind of freedom to be able to move wherever you want to within this entire region and the reason that me and my family were allowed to move um to England and start up you know this this life that's you know so amazing like I can't I can't fault um Birmingham or well you know you could about any place that you lived <laughs> but like it, you know it, it's just the way it's ended up and I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way at this point but that to uh, have that kind of idea or that that freedom to then be ripped out from under our feet is it so it's really sad so what is your relationship with Birmingham now love it <laughs> there's like no other um way to talk about it like because obviously all my friends have kind of gone to uni and I, I always thought like I'd be the first person to leave um for uni or just want to get out wasn't I was never that much of a fan of Birmingham growing up but that's because well, Birmingham as, as a city, um, that's because I always compared it to Germany, but especially recently as I'm like, no, it, it's just, it's beautiful. Like every, anyone that, you know, like people outside of Birmingham always like slate it, but as a, as a Birmingham, you can always be like, no, no one else can take the piss out of Birmingham apart from like people living in Birmingham. And like, you can see like living here, how much it's actually developing and growing and there's so many like opportunities and things to get involved in that you feel like you very much have a say over what's going on in the city or you can you know get get involved in projects like these <laughs> um and there's you know it's it's definitely on its way up and I'm always going to like like be proud of it because I know yeah again I keep repeating it but I wouldn't be the same person had I not like grown up here and like met the people that I had um Birmingham's definitely amazing for it's it's multiculturalism um people my friends that have like moved up up north really miss it um and actually find it so weird that that that's not a thing <laughs> um yeah i guess it's felt it's provided a lot of home and a lot of comfort and um an entrance into even my own culture which i didn't kind of realize until like recently because you've got like a, a, a south asian um minority living here as well that yeah, I was able to access my own culture without um, it being introduced to me, like, I guess, from home. So that was really nice. Um, it's just that the people definitely are, like, some of the best. And, it's just, yeah, it's just got everything going on. Um, it's just, like, everything you need. And I think I definitely appreciated it um, a lot after coming back from Pakistan. Because, um, like, to go through Pakistan, you had to go to... To, um, get a connecting flight from Dubai um, and I just kind of like after coming back was so grateful for Birmingham to like, being this in between because like Birmingham um, no Dubai was you know like top of the top really really rich for like people and um, like like amazing buildings but also it just feels it all feels quite unnecessary and um, a little bit fake I'm not sure how I feel about it and then Pakistan uh, we went back to my dad's um, old family house, which is, yeah, in, in slums, really. Um, and we went to visit a hospital there. Um, one of my dad's friends had, um, his son had um, suffered a burn accident. So he, he actually got like set on fire. Um, and his, my dad's like one of my, literally one of my dad's best friends, like, he 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 tried to help his son out obviously so he 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 ended up burning his hands and his son um was kind of like charred from like the stomach upwards and so we went to visit him in the hospital but it wasn't even like his injuries like they were horrific like to see it wasn't even that 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 
what I was the most shocked about is the conditions of, of you know, this Lahore City Hospital. And Lahore is, is a big city. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's not it's not poor. Um, obviously, there are different parts that are poorer than others. Um, but it, it was, you know, so bad to the point that there's no organisation, there's no, um, you know, you've got a shortage of doctors. But what... And it was always almost like set up like a city. It was like a massive like campus, and you have people coming from all over like the country even to go there. That so when you have um, a family member in hospital, um, you can't just then pop back and then go out and then pop back to your hospital because this is like probably the only kind of clinical place um, that you've got in that region. Um, that you actually had families camping outside of the hospital and, and sleeping on the streets, and yeah, you. You experience it was it was a bit of a crazy experience, but like coming back to Birmingham, definitely felt like a middle ground and somewhere that I could really connect to and call home in that way. Somewhere that somewhere like a place that I felt safe in, I could kind of politically um, align myself to in ways, and um, it's nice knowing you have a support network around you and different like various places. I spent a lot of time in city centre. Um, and other regions in Birmingham, yeah, I, I, I can't can't say anything bad about it to be honest. <laughs>